This is the simple gear train with idler. Notice this mechanism has three separate gears. They're attached to the test bed with the axles, and those axle shafts are, the relationship with each other, are that they are parallel to each other. You'll notice that the motion of these gears is rotary. They will all spin. Notice that they are all touching. Let's dive into the motion a little bit more. First, the first gear that you see over here has the handle crank or the power attached to it. This is our drive gear, our driver. This is the one adding the power to the mechanism. That transfers that power to this gear here called the idler and that transfers the motion to the output gear over here or the driven gear. Let's watch that motion. Drive clockwise to the idler counterclockwise to the driven output clockwise. The idler gear transfers power but also changes direction so that the input and the output are moving at the same direction. Let's talk about size of gears. You'll notice that the input and the output gears are the same size. We have a mark on top of them and you'll notice if I give them one full turn, they will both end up on top. So they are a one to one ratio because they are the same size. The size of the idler gear does not matter. The purpose of the idler gear is to change direction so that this gear and this gear are moving the same direction. Now, because they're a, the same size, because both of these gears are in a one-to-one -one ratio and they are the same size, it will not increase torque and it will not increase speed. In fact, it will not increase uh, torque or speed. It keeps the uh, torque and speed at a constant one-to-one -one ratio. So the torque and speed are both constant. The flow of power on this is reversible. If I move the output, it will move the input. So the flow of power will transfer from the output through the idler to the input. It is reversible. Couple more things about the simple gear with idler. If you remove the output gear, it would turn the idler into the output. If you removed the idler, these two would not be touching. And if I spun this one, this one would not move. So the gears must be touching and connected in order to transfer that power. This is the simple gear train with idler. Okay. Well, one more thing to note. If we remove the idler gear and slide the output over so that it is touching the input, it will then just become a simple gear train like gear train A with a one-to-one -one ratio. Direction. And the directions will be opposite. The idler changes that.